Yeah. Nice to have you in here, man. I remember the first time I ever heard about you was just academics doing videos about you getting caught up back in the day, like four or five years ago. Yeah. I really don't like academics. Oh, you don't? No. Well, I let's don't get like right it. into it. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> like academics because I feel like the war on Chirac, he, mm. he basically got the clout from our city and he doesn't really do too much for our city no more. Like, kind of, it's like, it's almost like he basically every time he comes, it's always something negative on a rapper in our city. You feel me? Mm. Without, like showing love back really so i mean this the interesting thing with academics is that now he does mostly like just big name rappers yeah, but back then when he got started he was like that dude just really covering all this like street shit that nobody yeah, else was really like exactly but but how did you feel about that because on one hand you're somebody who's like kind of brand new to the stardom and he's helping to make you famous but at the same time it kind of feels like he's airing your shit yeah, out right he, it's like he put me on blast a little bit like as far as like with the scamming which it wasn't nothing wrong with doing what he did it's just the way he did it mm. you know what i mean instead of posting like okay all this negative shit what's up with the positive shit that we do do for our community like as far as what i do for chicago mm. other rappers do for chicago it's strictly negative you know so if somebody's outside looking in and never been to chicago they automatically look at the rappers as being negative they don't want to come to chicago you ask somebody about chicago they're gonna say oh i don't want to go to chicago it's mm. bad yeah which really is good i stay in the rich part you feel me mm -hmm. so it's like shit it's good to me well it's just interesting because i mean that was a very new thing especially at that time because they were basically he was taking people like you who really weren't that big of names like maybe you were popping on more of an underground chicago level and you had yeah. youtube videos going up and stuff like that but then he was talking about the criminal exploits in a way that normally you know you're used to seeing people talk about the charges against big time rappers exactly but it was kind of like a new thing like oh this rapper who just has more of an underground chicago buzz and you're going to be doing multiple videos about them getting caught up for fraud and all exactly, that kind of shit. yeah i mean like i say dj academics the shit he did it was cool like it did give it helped I'm not gonna lie, he did help me get to the next level as far as with the my name building, but mm. I just feel like the good stuff that we do in Chicago is not recognized enough. You know mm. what I mean? As far as but I mean, it's another story though, you know? I mean, it's kind of interesting because there's like a lot of there's a lot of content that's just out there in the streets. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Oh, actually, you know what's interesting about that time period is that at that time period, it was more like you had somebody like academics putting a bunch of random people on blast that didn't necessarily want their stuff out there as much but nowadays it feels like everybody just puts their own shit on blast either putting their shit on instagram stories and lives exactly. or they just go and do interviews with people and basically just air out or all their criminal of, exploits or a lot of them they're making up fake stories mm. because if you really are a scammer and you really got caught by the fbi to be all over mm. you get what i'm saying because the paperwork will be you won't have to really go make up this and do this and post this because it the news is going to post all that mm. once you get a criminal complaint it is all over the internet Mm. Without without even you having to say nothing, the the press will say something because they want the story to be big. Because if you go to jail, they make money off you going to jail. Just right. like I just came home in March. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I and only how been many home. Years from, you do? I do two and a half years. Okay. I would have just did two years even probably if I wouldn't have got caught with the cell phone oh. and a laptop. You feel me? So and I a said, laptop. Yeah. Jesus basically, Christ. when like me by me being a big scammer, bro, it's jail is nothing but this inside of a place where it's all gas mm. it's not what you think on tv or anything like that it's strictly just like this but it's all gas you get what you want if you have a lot of money on the outside mm. you know what i mean so you can send money here send money there guards are bring it in whatever whatever you want you getting basically but so when you're in jail and you have an iphone and a laptop do you have like some percentage of the guards who aren't cool and want to fuck you over and catch you with that shit and then some percentage are like getting money off of you and shit so they're cool or is it the kind of thing where just everybody doesn't really give a fuck as long as you're paying no you have some guards that is cool you have some guards that's not cool so so let's say if you got the cool guard that works from 10 to 4 and the bad guard that works from 4 to 9 you can't have your phone out from four to nine. You have to you have to find somewhere to hide it, or you pay somebody to hide the phone or the laptop. You know what I mean? Like two hundred dollars for the week or something. They always hide it from four to nine. Mm. You know what I mean? Then we bring it back out at ten and we be on it. You know that's how you know, keep up what's going on in the world. Or if you making money, you keep up what's going on. Whatever you know. You think somebody like six nine got a, a phone in prison right no. now? No, no, because he's too see, high profile. See, that's the thing. If you're if you're gonna go to jail, and you're gonna do the crime, you cannot tell. You can't be a snitch. You can't be. I'm sorry, because if you do that, you, 
Everything gets stripped. The guards, they they won't like you. Mm, the so inmates won't they like you. They look down on you for snitching yes, as well. Yes. They are regular people, bro. And they ride more with the inmates. They listen to the inmates all the time. So if I need some tissue, I got to ask the guard. So we interact right. with everything. Hey, I need a blanket. I need some tissue. I need this. So they listen to what? Like the, the snitches, they cannot sit in a TV room. You have to sit. You have to watch TV in a hallway with your chair outside. Uh-huh. And look at TV from the outside. Wow. You feel me? But people are walking in and out, so you barely get to watch TV. Right. You cannot sit at certain tables. You can't sit close to the, like, where you get your food. You have to sit all the way in the back and get your food last. It's real. If so, most of the guards, black or white, what's the racial breakdown, roughly? It's mixed. From, they from, from they, the, the prison you were in? The prison I was in, it was... It was uh, it was mostly whites, okay. but um, it was Hispanics and blacks. And the, the actually, the Hispanic ones was more racist. Really? They were more like calling you, now here it is, and this. Like, yeah, it was that bad. You know what I mean? They was like, you won't be doing nothing wrong, but they'd say, tuck your shirt in and do this and do that. It, it was like that a little bit. You feel me? Interesting. They, they, they overpower their authority. Right. Do you think that that's kind of because they might have been used? Like, let's be probably real, on they some knew street? Who, yeah, oh, probably because okay. they knew who I was. Right. And they're like, oh, I heard he had a lot of money and a mm. fuck you type shit. So and a lot of times the black dudes are the tougher dudes on the street. So then when you get this dude in the, a position of authority, yes, maybe he bro. wants to sort yes, of take out yes. some of his animosity. Yes. And like, like when I got caught with the cell phone and the uh, laptop, uh, I went to the shoe, and like I said, I was locked 23 hours, one hour out the shower. That was twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh -huh. So they make you go through the worst. You stop eating after 4 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So could you imagine your, your dinner is at 4 o'clock, and you got to wait all the way to 6 a.m. to eat? Torture. You know what I mean? And then y'all make me work. They make you work for 12 cents, 11 cents an hour. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's man, it's bad, bro. You feel me? So is it tempting when you're in that environment to just spend all the fucking money you got so that you're more comfortable when you're in yes, prison? Yes, bro. That's that's the whole goal. You might catch, okay, the feds ain't what you think. Everybody is in there is not rich. Everybody is, you have big scammers, you have little scammers, you have, just like you have a, a El Chapo and you have the guys that work on the corner with the bags. You got the big scammers that, like me, that can make millions. Then you have the little scammers that can get on a dark web and just get little credit cards and get food and pay for Ubers and buy shoes and clothes. You got but those types. You guys of all end up in the feds together? Yes, but you know the restitution amount and you know this. You can tell who's balling by, I might have three guys and I might have my girl or whoever send money to this guy books, this guy books, this guy books. He don't go to the store. Uh -huh. So he's going to go to the store for me. So my locker is his locker. You get what I'm saying? Right. So if I'm gambling in jail, I got a poker table or whatever I got, that's my locker. Uh -huh. Only, I'm going to give your ass $20. Right. You feel me? That's depending on how cool I am with you. I might just give you $20 to hold that down because uh -huh. $20 is a lot in jail. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was like that. It was very comfortable. The phones, you don't hold no phones. You only get them when you need to use them. Is in, in, in prison or in the feds, is it much more common for people to be in there for fraud type stuff than Man, like drug cases? You, you got the... Okay, you got the you have more scammers in jail than drug dealers because scamming is the new wave right now. That's what the cops want to catch. They want right now scam yes because okay, no, the the cops want to catch drug dealers because drug dealers get more time. There's more violence associated with drug dealing whereas yeah, a scammer look, don't have to kill anybody. See, they they feel like this. I can lock you up for 10 years, 20 years and make $100,000 to a million dollars off you. Mm. The scammer only get a few years so he's pointless. Mm. Unless he runs, I was locked up with scammers that made two, three, four hundred million dollars, and they only had twelve years. Wow! But the guy that had uh, like ten eight balls, he gets life, natural life, mm -hmm. natural life. That's a million dollars. Wow. The government makes thirty five thousand dollars off you a year. Uh -huh. You feel me? And they file you on taxes, and they make you work. So mm -hmm. you're working, and they're getting paid for you. Right. You know what I mean? So they're giving you twenty dollars. We are doing. I'm talking about thousand dollars. They they're building jails, bro. The inmates are building jails. So uh -huh. could you imagine? You have the inmate making the walls, making the putting the barbed wire fences up. Just That's, to put somebody else like him in there. Exactly, giving them ten cents an hour. Oof. See what I mean? So that's is real life. You see the, the girl JT just got out. You feel yeah. me? So you you understand that what like I understand what she's saying in her music. So when she was talking about R and D, that's when you first get to prison. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And you got to check in. They're gonna make you put on a ten. 
a suit with some blue shoes. She dropped the first day off for you, so I didn't hear it yet. Is she speaking yeah, on all yeah, that? Yeah, yes. Okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah, okay. I like that. So she's a real one in your book. Because she, she, yeah, she's yeah. one of the few girls out there who did time for scamming. <laughs> yes, bro. That's Man, that scamming is the wave. That's how I came up, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I it, came up crazy. Is that how it feels in Chicago these days, is that you're kind of a bum if you're standing on the corner selling crack? But yes, if you're the dude bro. running around with hella credit cards and shit, and you got so, all the designer so look, from so, that, you're the man? Yeah, so look. Like, okay. It's like I was telling you. It's a few different types of scammers. The scammers really like the if you're not a big drug dealer, you ain't no shit. Right. If you're not getting a lot of money, you're not that's with anybody. You can even be a scammer. If you're not getting a lot of money, you you are not a scammer to the Chicago at least. You're you know scamming what I mean? Yourself. You have to be balling foreign cars like me. Six, seven homes, forty eight hundred dollars here, sixty four hundred dollars here, twelve hundred dollars here. You feel me? And most of the times the, the little cheap CPN cribs, those are trap cribs that I got six, seven people in with laptops. On the dark web doing shit for me, you feel me? Uh -huh. So it just depends on like what you what you call scamming because yeah, you might have your little runner. Like some of these guys that's out here on the internet that call themselves scammers, they are runners to me, bro. Uh -huh. You feel me? I would have them going to Neiman's, go get me some free clothes, right. get their ass twenty percent. So talk to me about getting into scamming though. Before we get into like what eventually you might have built out of it and everything, talk yeah. about what your first your first play that you figured out was. The first place I did was bank. Bank moves. Bank moves is you might have a banking account with no money in it. I put five to ten to fifteen thousand dollars in that account. We're not. You're not at risk. I'm not at risk. The bank is at risk. But I'm gonna tell you after we do this account, just report your shit stolen. Mm. You get what I'm saying? We split the bread. But like I said, depending on our relationship, I might give your ass two thousand. I'm gonna keep the rest. You feel me? Right. But you ate though. You ate. It's free bands basically. So just now on my level of scamming, I might have 10 people. Like you say you got, let's say if you said you had Bank of America, mm. I'm not going to do your card unless you tell me you got 10 people. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make you get 10 people and you're going to get all 10 people and you do the math. That's seven times 10. There's a pyramid in one day. Right there. You feel me? Yeah. In one day. And you don't have to really. In order to withdraw the money and to to basically make it look as if the bank account was scammed, but really it's you doing it. What do you like? What do you do so to withdraw the money? You okay, just hit mad this, ATMs? No, no, no. The at, you go every, to the bank AT, and every ATM has a limit. Uh -huh. So this is how you finesse. You don't go in a bank because they don't want to be on camera. You cannot report the car stolen if you're on camera. Mm. So you go. So let's say if it's Bank of America, their ATM is 800. Okay, boom. You take out 800 out the ATM. You don't do it. You use one of these. You feel me? <laughs> you really so, pull up in that? Yeah. You're going to pull up in that anonymous or, you know, with the hoodie on and shit. So basically, my thing is, though, you have to check the daily debit limit. Mm. It's an ATM limit and a daily debit limit. Your daily debit limit is 10 racks. Mm. So what you're going to do is I don't do nothing without connections. Like, okay, if this lady works as a currency exchange, most likely I'm a getter. She going she gonna to be my friend. I'm going to pay her, do whatever. Now I can send you in there. Hey, man, my homie finna go in there and swipe for 7000 uh -huh. Cash events. One swipe, 7000 Right. 800 out the ATM. Never touch the bank. Yeah. You feel me? But it's you don't just be no, just walk in there random on some random shit and try to get the money. You're going to ask to get caught. Mm. Only way I got caught is because I got told on. You feel me? Oh, so you got that I shit. was really, I was setting my people up, bro, always to win. I didn't just walk in stores and did nothing sloppy. If, I, if you're a Nemus, it's because you are somebody I know that's in there and it's 100% going. If you're an Apple, I know I'm going to get 50 phones off you because mm. you work there. You already know what's going on.